once about a farmer who had an old horse that helped him plow his fields. And so one day, the horse escaped and went off into the mountains. And all his neighbors came and were consoling him. They said, oh, what a terrible stroke of bad luck that was. And the farmer looked at his neighbors and just said, bad luck, good luck, who knows? And about a week later, that old horse returned with a dozen other horses. And all his neighbors came back and were celebrating, wow, what a stroke of good luck you bitches had. And again, the farmer looked at his neighbors and said, good luck, bad luck, who knows? So a few days later, his son was trying to tame one of these wild horses. And the wild horse bucked his son off, and his son broke his leg. And again, it seems like a bad luck. And then the farmer thought to himself, bad luck, good luck, who knows? Well, about two weeks later, the army came. They were recruiting any able-bodied young men to go fight the war. And when they looked at his son with a broken leg, he was no good to them. So they left him be. Good luck, bad luck, who knows? So luck. What is luck? How do we quantify luck? Does it even exist? Does it seem like some people get more breaks and some people get less breaks? Well, I don't know if I really believe in luck, or at least, let me rephrase it, I believe that you can create your own luck. And tonight, I'm going to teach you a tool for creating your own luck. And after that, I'm going to teach you how to take that tool and apply it to something in your life that may need a little extra help. Let me start by talking a little bit about the human brain. Did you guys know that your conscious brain can only focus on about seven things at a time. But your unconscious brain can focus on hundreds of things. Perfect example is when you think about when you first learned how to drive, way back when you were like 16 years old. I mean, literally, when you learn how to drive, you have to think about everything. You think about putting your seatbelt on. And you think about which key goes in the ignition, checking your mirrors. You think about which gas, which pedal makes the car go, which one makes it stop. You have to think about everything. But now, you can drive down the freeway 80 miles an hour, talking on your Bluetooth. You can look at your GPS maps. You can eat a Twinkie all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why you can do that? Because your subconscious is actually driving your car. Your subconscious knows to check your blind spot and look ahead for obstacles and make sure that you didn't run out of gas without you actually having to think about it, so you can think about these other things. And it's the same reason why you can drive from point A to point B, and when you get there, you can't remember exactly how you got there. Or you don't remember how many red lights you actually had. <laughs> so the subconscious is, is a very powerful tool. Now, question for you. Have you guys ever gone out to buy a new car and you, you do all the research, you look for the right make and model, you find, you find the perfect color that matches you, and you're so excited. So you sign the paperwork, and you drive off the lot. And for that whole week, guess what? You see that car everywhere. It seems like everyone else in town is driving the same car <laughs> that you just bought. <laughs> well, guess what? Those cars were all there before you bought your car. <laughs> but because you bought your car, you're so conscious now, every time it sees one, it brings it to your focus. It, it takes that car out of hundreds of other models and colors, and it points out that particular model to you, so you all of a sudden notice it. About three months ago, I did a speech right here where I talked about how lucky I've been in my life with finding money on the ground. And I pointed out three different instances where I found uh, money. And I talked about how lucky I am. But now tonight, I'm here to tell you that I'm not lucky. It's not luck at all. You see, I've found, in my lifetime, I have found money dozens and dozens of times. I've already found money three or four times this year. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. You see, I have trained my subconscious brain to look for money <laughs> the same way that your brain looks for that car that you just bought. I can walk down a sidewalk that 25 other people walked by and didn't see a dollar bill on the ground. 
but my subconscious points it out to me, and I pick it up. <laughs> this is all true, I promise you. The subconscious is extremely powerful. But what if we could take our subconscious, take that tool, and apply it to something even better than finding a couple bucks on the ground? What if we could apply it to a problem you have in your life, something that is a sticking point? And that's what I want to teach you to do. I want to introduce a concept that probably all of you in this room have suffered from at least at one point in your life. And it's called the potential gap. It's a very, very simple concept. The concept is as simple as you look at a different part of your life, maybe your career, maybe how much money you make, uh, the type of house you live in. And you look at where you are right now, and then you compare it to where you think you should be. What your potential is. And that gap, that distance is the gap. So you think you deserve to make this much money, but your job's only paying you this much money. There's a gap there. What if we could take our subconscious, take that tool, and start working on that potential gap? Start lessening the distance, helping you create your best potential. Well, it's a very, very simple way to do it. All you have to do is take part of your life. Let's just take the, the easy one is money. You want to make this. This is what you're making right now. You have a gap. And all you have to do is picture exactly what you want to make. What does it look like? Get a very crystal clear picture in your mind. How much you need so that you know when you've gotten there. And then all you have to do is ask your subconscious a very simple question is how. How are you going to get there? What do you need to do to get there? And you will set your mind in motion, your subconscious mind in motion. Because guess what? The subconscious mind does not like an unsolved puzzle. It's the same reason why when you, when you tell your friends about a movie you saw and you can't remember the main actor in the movie, it drives you nuts for about five minutes. And then two days later, it pops into your head, maybe sometimes in the middle of the night. You know why? Because your subconscious kept thinking about it for two days until it finally, it finally figured it out and popped it into your conscious mind. So we're going to apply the same concept. You are going to create an unsolved puzzle for your brain. That unsolved puzzle is how do you get to where you want to go? And I promise you, if you go home and you take a part of your life tonight, and you ask yourself that question. This is where I am. This is where I want to be. How do I get there? Your brain will start thinking about it. And maybe not this week. And maybe not next week. But at some point, all of a sudden, guess what? An idea is going to pop into your head. Or you're going to, you're going to see a path. All of a sudden, you, you start seeing a, a different way of doing things. And you will start to find a solution to how you get there. And it's not going to hand it to you on a silver platter, but it'll show you the path. And then you need to, to take advantage of it and live up to your potential. And in six months or a year, when you get there, and your friends all gather around you and say, wow, what a year you've had. Well, you've had some really good luck. You can look at them and say, good luck, bad luck, 